Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. It is Saturday the 11th of January 2020 and the time I'm recording this is 4.22 a.m. Very specific. Ooh. Uh, Saturday the 11th. Wow. <sighs> so I'm quite tired. Oh, let me tell you about yesterday. So I had a really, really good night. I was awake all night, but I had a really good night. I got lots done, lots of uh, website stuff done. I made uh, two recordings, the Let Me Bore You to Sleep and a Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I felt good, you know. And during that day, I know obviously it was a different day but the period that I was awake I also did a a what's it recording as well a relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks so it was a good day it was, it was okay um, the only Okay, the 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 travelling the travelling waiting around for a bus part wasn't great, but I had a bit of a sleep when I got back, and yeah, so I had a good night, felt good, and you know, I felt quite accomplished in the sense of I got something done. <sighs> However, I didn't go to bed till a lot later than normal. Normally I'm up at night, I'm in bed by 6, maybe 5, sometimes 4, but uh, I didn't go to bed till probably about quarter past 7 in the morning, which is a lot later than normal, than what I'd normally go to bed. And I was woken up at about 10 o'clock by banging uh, someone not banging <laughs> um, someone near the garages was banging something uh, like hammering or something I don't know uh, so I went back to sleep and then I was woken up by what I thought was knocking on my door so I get up have a you know have a look for the key I'll see who's there no one's there uh, and then I hear a voice in the garden so I look outside and there's someone standing in the garden and I realise it's one of my uh, basically without going into specific details uh, I realised who it was who I thought it, it was and heard something uh, um I'm being vague, aren't I? But basically, it turned out that one of my neighbours had collapsed in their flat, and the neighbour's parent couldn't get in to the flat because the door was locked. So I, I came out of my place and just sort of said, "Are you okay?" I didn't really know what was going on, but I could see that sh the person in the garden was distressed. I could hear from the voice, and I thought, I'll just check, make sure that they were okay, uh, see if there's anything I could do. And basically, the this just to let you know, this next bit's a bit, it's not nice what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to go into details, but it was... It was an unpleasant experience for for those involved. Um, so she could s speak to her daughter that had collapsed. 
but she could speak through the letterbox and she said I can't get to the door I'm on the floor I can't get to the door and I said to the lady who was outside the front door you need to call an ambulance and she was saying I oh, know it's okay I'll wait till my door gets here I said no you need to call an ambulance now I said no it'll be okay I'll be, give you, the door will be in my, my other door will be in 10 minutes and it took me 20 times of telling her to call an ambulance and saying if you don't call an ambulance I will call an ambulance and in the end she called an ambulance and then the next thing was how are we going to get her into her flat because the ambulance driver can't do that the ambulance paramedics can't do that so I and uh, the lady was she was told that the ambulance she said to me the ambulance said they'll be here in the next 40 minutes and then she said I should have told them that she was having a heart attack because then they would have come straight away well I called the, I called the police I f went upstairs I called the police and said listen the lady's down she's collapsed can't get to the front door we can't get in there can you send someone around to get through to the front door to help her and the police said no what do you expect us to do what do you want us to do I said we'll get into the flat they said no that would be the fire service I said well in that case I'm going to smash through the window to get in and the, police, the person on the police really didn't seem to care so I said okay don't worry see ya so I hang up go downstairs luckily the window is open uh, the bathroom window is open only a little window though but you know in the end I knocked on another neighbour's door and then the daughter turned up and just as the daughter turned up the um, me and my friend got the, the window off or well, my friend got the window off I watched him do it so her daughter the other daughter it's getting confusing so we're waiting for the ambulance her daughter's got a first aid kit with her which is good so she's which is she's prepared for something she's able to climb through the window and just as she's climbing through the window the ambulance turn up so the ambulance ambulance are really quick um, within probably six seven minutes six minutes really quick she climbs through the window because the ambulance driver said oh, I'm not going to be able to get through there I said uh well, I understand you, you, you're pretty jealous because I'm so slim, I said to them. And she laughed. And uh, so my neighbour's sister, that was the one that climbed through the window, climbed through her sister's window, opened the front door, let the paramedics in. And they closed the door and, you know, obviously I didn't go in there. It's, it's not my, none of my business to do that. And uh, we, I think at one point they were saying, um, we said, Do you want a cup of coffee or something like that? And to the, to the ladies that were there, because they were just frantic, shaking and cuddling each other, it was just, it was very, very distressed, obviously. And then things turned worse, and the my neighbour was taken into the ambulance. It was serious. So I went upstairs, had me breakfast. It wasn't serious enough for me to not eat. <laughs> Obviously, I d I couldn't do anything. I'm not a paramedic, so they were doing what they did downstairs. I figured everything was fine. She was just going to get checked over. Um, I went upstairs had me breakfast that I'd already I think I'd already made it and I just like it's getting a bit cold so I had that I had you know had me drink a coffee 
and then I came down. And as I was in the kitchen, I could see she was being taken into the ambulance. So I come down just to see what's, you know, she looked really in a bad way. And I come down and the the mother and the sister were there and I said, she stopped breathing. And they were in the ambulance trying to resuscitate her. I thought she was having a heart attack. So I was like, wow. Um, so we were all standing out there, me and my friend and the, t the two ladies, that her family was just standing there, almost not knowing what to do, or not, not what's going to happen next. There's two ambulances and there's another ambulance, like a mini emergency ambulance turns up, like a specialist, I guess. Um, anyway, they were doing what they were doing with the ambulance they didn't let anyone in there so they wouldn't allow family inside the ambulance while they were doing what they had to do and then a, a, a man comes out the, the uh, paramedic comes out of the ambulance and he, he looks at me and he, he, he shook his head and I really f I thought the worst and then he said who's is anyone here related because I didn't know who was because there's so many paramedics no one knew who anyone was like connected to the the lady that was in the ambulance and the two la the two ladies that were there said yeah we're her family so he said to him she did stop breathing we've got her got her breathing again and we don't know if she's we don't know if it's a heart attack we don't know as yet what what the what the cause was um but she needs to be taken to the hospital. But we have to find out before we take her to the hospital, try and find out what it is, what the cause of it is, so we know which hospital to take her to. Um, I might not have had my breakfast till after this bit. I had my breakfast at some point. It wasn't the most enjoyable uh, porridge that I've ever eaten to be fair but my stomach was just churning and I just had to eat uh, anyway I did that brought my coffee down my friend made them a cup of tea uh, because she was just in the ambulance so we just uh, her mum said I need to sit down I said well come in and we went in there and they both uh, came in for about two minutes and then the daughter went out again and they said yeah they're taking her so they all had to sort of leave and go to the hospital and that was it and I've heard nothing left I've not heard nothing since and uh, so I've got no idea how she is or anything so it's just a bit of a weird a weird start to the day um, terrible for her my neighbour and her family but just really really weird it was just a really it is, couldn't even predict a start of the day like that couldn't predict that that was going to happen but what I discovered about myself <laughs> is you know there was a part of me that I'll be honest with you, I actually, I put my shoes on to go down and then I took my shoes off again and I thought, no, I'll keep myself to myself because I didn't know what was going on at that point, at the beginning. I didn't know, all I knew that there was a distressed person in the garden. I didn't know what the reason was or what, you know, had no idea that my neighbour was on the floor or collapsed or anything. And the reason why I nearly didn't go down is because I've got involved in stuff in the past and I've had people tell me off or, you know, have a go at me for it. Almost like I'm a busybody when I'm not. I'm, I'm not interested in other people's lives. Just if someone's in trouble, I like to... I don't like to help. I just 
kind of have to. I think it's the duty of all of us to to look out for each other. It just I don't think it's even something you need to to learn, is it? Isn't it something that's in, ingrained in our um, genes when we're born? Surely. Anyway, I mean, part of the reason, the, the couple of things that happened here. There's been a couple of things. There was one. Uh, there was a fire <laughs> in the garden opposite me, over the fence. Three o'clock in the morning, or two thirty in the morning, or four. You know, it was very early hours. I'm awake at night, and I just saw. I, heard, I was doing a recording, and I heard this crackling. You know, the crackle of a bonfire, but and this was a. Uh, some people that were constantly having bonfires in the evening but not at that time of the morning and it was pitch black outside no lights on and it was the garden was on fire and I go down there thinking well I need to first of all I phone my friend who lives over there just to say listen there's a there's a fire going on. Could you just make, but he didn't answer. I just want to let him know that there's a, or he might, I don't know, but there's a fire. Just make sure you get out of your place and get yourself safe. In the end, I went down to the garden, looked over the fence, and there was a fire. I wasn't imagining it. And basically, the drum where the fire was, they must have just left it to die down. And it tipped over, or the wind, or something, and it had spread. But they were actually the neighbours were actually in the garden putting it out. By the time I got downstairs and looked over the fence, so I just left it. But my neighbour told them that I'd called, or somebody told them that I'd I'd mentioned it, and they were annoyed with me. <laughs> it's like. It's like, okay, sorry for being caring about fires and stuff at four o'clock in the morning in the gardens. You know, it wasn't a controlled fire. The grass was on fire. This was in the summer. It's like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, another time, I do, it's, it's almost like I'm a busybody. Another time in the summer, again, it was this summer, a lot gone. A friend of mine, who I get on quite well with, she was screaming, <laughs> really screaming, and she was round her boyfriend's flat. So I knocked on the door. I left it, but it was, and I was, I was worried that she was in trouble. So I knocked on the door, um, and that didn't go down very well with her boyfriend is like then <laughs> oh there's other stuff but it's just like it gets to a point where I'm thinking oh, I just shouldn't shouldn't get involved I've stopped two fights uh, since I've been here it's like what, why why I've even got in the middle of two people to stop them. Okay, and it's like you don't get no thanks. <laughs> it's no. It's like I don't want to get in. I don't want to be involved in that stuff. So I nearly, nearly today or yesterday took my shoes back off and went back to bed. That's what I nearly did. But I thought, no. The right thing to do is just check just make sure I can tell when someone's distressed I suppose most people can there's not a special power that I've got but I could I got the energy I, I could just the way the sound of the voice sounded distressed so I went down to check and as it was it was an emergency 
more of an emergency than she thought and she wasn't going to call an ambulance so who knows what would have happened if I hadn't gone down there and actually badgered her into calling an ambulance which meant the ambulance got there just in time literally they were there and within minutes she stopped breathing so perhaps I did the right thing by being a busybody if that's the right word but ultimately it was my friend who took the window off and then her daughter or her sister whatever that climbed through the window so it was like a big um and her mother phoning the ambulance so all those little bits that went together just me on my own couldn't have done much at all apart from try and kick the door in because I'd never fit through a window I couldn't even fit through a, a veranda window I couldn't, I couldn't even fit through a, a seven foot window no, I could but I can't fit through a little window I'd be stuck you need an ambulance for me or a fire engine for me. So yeah, it was a weird. So now I'm thinking, should I, should I get, I don't know, because people do knock on my door when they need help. I've had three neighbours lock themselves out and knocked on my door to help them to get back in either to get a locksmith or for them to sit in there while they're waiting for the locksmith or you know to try and get in some other way so I try and help people when I can I'm not saying this because I'm a hero because well we all know I'm a hero we don't <laughs> I'm, it's not that at all it's, it's nothing that anyone else wouldn't do But because of some of the things that happened earlier in the year, or last year rather, I nearly didn't go downstairs at all. And if I hadn't gone downstairs, I don't think the ambulance would have been called. Not until at least her, her daughter got there. So it would have been a... They'd have called the ambulance... Just kind of before the... Amb just as the ambulance was arriving, if you know what I mean. So there would have been a big delay, possibly. And when the ambulance got there, they said... Busiest morning... That I've had for a long time because I said to her, you, I thought you were going to be 40 minutes they said we thought we were so busy today for some reason got no idea why just super busy might be because it's a full moon or something she didn't say that um, but I was howling what I noticed about myself is very impatient in those situations in a sense of I was just saying to a, to a mum call an ambulance you need to call an ambulance I'll wait until no you need to call an ambulance now I'll wait until no you need to call an ambulance now I kept on and on and on until I said if you don't I will and then she did And it was it it took 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 a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes before she sort of succumbed, maybe five minutes before she actually did call for an ambulance. And I was getting more and more frustrated because in that situation 
you kind of got to do the most that you can do as quickly as possible and all you can do in that situation really is call an ambulance if you can't get to the other side of the door and then find a way in don't wait until you found your way in then call an ambulance if you know the person's on the floor I don't know maybe maybe I'll just think differently about stuff I mean my nan was like that and she she broke her hip in the garden crawled all the way from the garden all the way I mean it was really badly damaged really injured herself really badly she climbed all the way into the house to the phone which was at the bottom of the stairs and who did she phone? my dad who might not have been there yeah didn't phone 999 a very easy number to remember and the only number that was required she phoned my dad and I said to her at the time after you know why didn't you just call an ambulance and she said oh I'll let your dad do that I didn't know if I needed an ambulance and to be fair she's probably in shock she didn't realise how how injured she was but I just maybe I just I think what it is I think what it is is I've called quite a few ambulances since I've lived here uh, for other people I've called and they all needed it uh, it's one, two three yeah I've called for three ambulances since I've lived here which is a lot but I guess it's for other people and I did have an ambulance come for me but I didn't call it it was uh the NHS Direct called it even though I told them I didn't want one because I was getting palpitations this is about a month or two ago and I know that some people they just don't want to call they, they feel that they shouldn't disturb the ambulance service but if it's an emergency See, mine wasn't an emergency, that's why I didn't want an ambulance. But on those other three occasions, they were emergencies, like very, very serious situations. So I had to call an ambulance, and the ambulance said they literally had to resuscitate these people. And they had, to, you know, so the ambulance was necessary. Otherwise, you know it would have been a different situation different outcome possibly there's no way of knowing really is there but so it's a really weird 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 day and not the most <laughs> cheery recording but I'm just sort of letting you know what's going on but I'll stop talking about that now because what I do really want to talk about is there was a thing that I used to do years ago oh I do want to say thank you to Boston Chicky for your lovely ooh, PayPal gift and uh What I was going to do... Where is it? What's the, the thing that you watch? You Books. Okay, books. <laughs> What's those things that you open and you look at? So what I want to do is... Search... Search 
Oh, come on. I'm beginning to think there's something wrong with this. Uh... Oh, there it is. Um, when I was a kid, I used to have, I used to read these books and they were Private Detective. Private Detective for Kids. Now, I don't know if they still have such a book, but they used to be. What See, what's coming up is a lot of, um, I suppose, a more. Uh, story books rather than how to oh private oh so I wanted to get hold of one of them books that I used to read when I was little which would be a practical guide to being a private detective or a private eye or a double agent, maybe. Goldilocks, Private Eye. Private Eye, Sam. No, none of these are coming up. I thought it'd be quite good because... Because I've got this Kindle and it's like a coloured Kindle where you can because I've got if you've got a black and white Kindle which I've got as well like it's an older one but it's just the book but with the colour one I can get stuff with pictures and and I was hoping I'd be able to get a hold of one of the uh, older books that used to be around let me have a look. Oh. Fire for kids. Let's have a look what's on here. So, yeah, it's, it's a weird day. You know, you get those days that are just a bit weird. Didn't end up... Didn't really end up doing anything. Today. Or yesterday. And even during the night. This evening... I watched a book, I watched a film rather, watched a film uh, called Don't Blink. That's really, it's quite good actually. I've not seen it before, but if I did see it, I don't remember. And uh, maybe I blinked. It's a good film. So if you've not seen a film called Don't Blink, I recommend it. It's okay. Use fire. Certainly if I could. Un with your own content. Okay. Oh no. Oh, fire for kids. That's just to. So you can track what they're doing. I don't want that. Kindle newsstand. What's in the news? WP? What's WP? Uh, so yeah, I... Tell you my favourite film of last year was... What was it? It was... Yesterday. The film's called Yesterday. It's really good. Now, if you haven't seen it, I recommend seeing it. It's an English film. And it's got one of my favourite actors. He's, he he was he used to be in EastEnders and he's really funny. 
he's just a really he's also he's almost got a well not almost he has got a comical delivery but very dry very droll or dull or you know it's is um, I think he's just really good always liked him in EastEnders and the film's really good I'm not I won't give away the um, the story because you, you to be fair if you watched a, a review of it or watched a, you know the video what do they call them premiere whatever you whatever you know if they you you kind of get the idea of what the film is about because that's the hook that's the hook to the film is the scenario but it's nice to watch it it's worth watching it without knowing what the scenario is because then it just gives it means it's a bit of a surprise and that surprise unfolds throughout the film you know there's still new little twists and turns that's just it's delightful it's a delight I don't use the word delightful generally but it's a delightful film it's upbeat and it's funny and it's yeah it's almost kind of joyous kind of a it's a good film it's a really nice film and uh, I'd recommend it to anyone that uh, likes good films <laughs> yeah dee 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 what other films did I like there's quite a few to be fair I've seen there's lots where was downloaded what does WP stand for Agree, continue. Oh, the Washington Post. I've got the Washington Post on here. Ah, that's all right, isn't it? Do I have to pay for it, though? When big news happens, we'll deliver. Swipe to begin. Oh, okay. It's giving me a, a list of menus, but I've no idea. Moscow. I know some people call it Moscow, don't they? But it's... Yeah. <laughs> I won't read that story. <laughs> um... put it this way I think uh, it's an embarrassing story for the country involved regarding their um, I don't know aim possibly would be the word bad aiming only metal in your chicken one Oh, this is quite interesting. I've never really tried to watch, to like read the news on a tablet before. But this is quite well put together, actually. Like the, the design of the newspaper. Girl Scout's new lemon cookie is underwhelming. Wow. Why would that be a story? Ah, flu. FBI assures foreign intelligence court it will tighten standards. It 
it's time to disrupt higher ed. Here's how. Ah. Oh, a teenager discovers a new planet on the third day of his NASA internship. That's interesting. I mean, you think about it. There's, there's something special about new eyes, isn't there? Fresh eyes looking at something. Especially something like space. Where I'm guessing it can look a bit samey at times. Well, like the little stars kind of mingled together a little bit. Uh. There's a thing is says, what happened to winter and will it ever show up? Were well, you in a hurry in a hurry for freezing temperatures, are you? Yeah, good luck with that. Starting to get cold here now. Which I'm not bothered about, but it's just It's supposed to, isn't it? I don't see any worry I don't see the point in worrying about things like weather. Gen you know, general weather I mean. And we're quite lucky in my country we don't get we don't get much extreme weather. Occasionally, you know, very high winds or um, a heck of a lot of rain in a short period of time. But generally, we're we're pretty okay. We don't don't have hurricane seasons. We don't have monsoon seasons or the flood seasons. You know, tropical stuff like that. And. Um, we don't have droughts, like proper, you know, droughts that some countries have. We're very, we're in quite a wet part of the world, you know, relatively. Hmm. Marianne Williamson drops out of presidential race. Oh, that's a shame. Don't know who she is. Let's have a look. Who is she? Marianne. Oh, no. It's trying to get me to pay. I don't want to pay. Oh, no. It is making me pay. It won't let me to read it unless I pay. By tapping below and subscribing to the Washington Post, you agree to our terms and conditions. Support journalism that matters. Get six months of access for only one dollar. But you're wrong. Your journalism doesn't matter. It's just... Oh, right, it's not letting me read it at all, not even on the smaller page. Oh. What's the point in being here, then? What's the point in it being... What's the point? It's just teasing me. I'm going to get rid of that. How can I get rid of it? Don't like that now. Very, very much don't like it. When your partner wants to be president. What? So if I've got the newsstand. So I look in boxing and see if it's got anything to do with boxing in there. Tyson Fury, successful boxers. Gary. Buy for seven ninety nine. Audible sample. Three pound forty seven. Gypsy King behind the mask. Yeah. How many books can you have? 
That's weird. So it's, it's offering this thing. So it's saying, oh, the um, news desk thing, newsstand. But when I go to f try and find stuff to put in there, there's nothing. There's nothing that I can actually download which is in the newsstand. And why is that? Oh, now it is. It's, I have to go to the thing. Best selling magazines. Deals on digital magazines. Best sellers. The Economist. The Week. Closer. <gasps> oh, sounds a bit loud, doesn't it? Sorry. Let's have a look at this. Wow, monthly. They want me to pay. I don't want to have to pay. Can't I get it for free? Isn't there like a monthly thing where I can get everything for a month? And I can read that stuff to you. And share it. It's got to be, surely, some kind of newsstand so current issue £1.49 this is for Closer magazine or monthly subscription five forty nine, which works out at £1.27 per issue oh how interesting 30 percent yeah, New Year's deal newspapers Kindle ok let's have a look at newspapers Blimey. Wow, I can't believe it. All the newspapers, yeah? Okay, technically you could say it's not that much considering it like, every day, but The Guardian, The Observer, so The Observer's on a Sunday and The Guardian's Monday to Saturday, £9.99 a month. The Times, I think it's the Times and the Sunday Times. I mean, it's, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of stuff to read. Fourteen pound ninety nine a month. The Telegraph's nine pound ninety nine a month. I mean, I probably would choose the Guardian out of the 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 bigger papers. The Mail. Eight pound ninety nine a month. Uh, the Daily Mail, Financial Times, seventeen pound ninety eight a month. Now I used to be a fan of the Independent until nineteen ninety three, when they did an article on me and it was a bit of a stitch up. Although I still have read it late afterwards as well, but. I kind of I didn't expect that from the independent because for me that was it was one of the papers I read it was one of my favourite papers and although I did also used to read the tabloids as well but that was just more for comedy material so the New York Times is £13.99 a month the Irish Times £14.99 a month I bet not many people in Ireland would pay that. That's a lot of money for a newspaper per month. I suppose monthly. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I still think, considering it's just on a screen, there's nothing, uh, this doesn't take any, no print, no paper. Uh, the New York Times International Version is 9 99 a month. The London's Evening Standard. Now this this I find interesting. It's three pound ninety nine a month, but they give them away free. The actual the newspapers themselves are given away free in London. Yeah, if you want to watch it, if you want to read them online, and I'm guessing they're still going to be full of adverts. Three ninety nine a month. The adverts bit is a guess because I can't know unless I pay for it. But uh, the 
Harold. I don't know what. Is it? Is that a Scottish paper? I think. Uh, nine ninety nine a month. Le Monde. I've got no idea what that is. Sounds French though, so it's twelve ninety nine a month. El Pays, Dizit. That sounds German, I think. Ten ninety nine a month. Le Stampa. Is that Spanish? El Pays. That's Spanish, isn't it? I don't know. I'm making it. I've got no idea. Um, Gazetta, Frankfurter Algamine, El Mundo. These were all, all s- Frankfurter Algamina. Sixteen pound ninety eight for a paper about sausages. Wow. So Sudish Zitung. Nineteen ninety nine a month. Politico, six pound ninety nine a month. Mail and Guardian. Again, I don't know where that's from. The Indian Express, three pound ninety nine a month. Sounds like a takeaway, doesn't it? The Reporter, National Catholic Reporter. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. Well, um. Two pound ninety nine a month. I wonder if that's daily. Yeah. The Los Angeles Times. That is seven pound ninety nine a month. To read on a on a what's it tablet. Nottingham Post, four pound ninety nine a month. The New Jujja. Sixteen ninety eight a month. So although it'd be interesting to read something like the Los Angeles Times, it'd also be I don't know, kind of irrelevant in the sense of I don't live there. I think it's probably more relevant for people that live in that area. Um, otherwise you can get the world news or the you just, yeah, I suppose. I mean, the New York Times again. That's like hugely famous paper, isn't it? But it's going to be they talk about world news and everything. But I imagine there's also going to be focusing on New York, which would make sense. I think there's a Baltimore Sun, four ninety nine a month, China Daily. Four ninety nine a month. Can't believe it's loads. Shanghai, 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 daily three pound ninety nine a month. Quad City, seven ninety nine a month. ABC, twelve ninety nine a month. The Globe and Mail, nine ninety nine a month. The Seattle Tunes, or Times. Uh, seven ninety nine a month. It looks like tunes the way the um the writing, the writing on the thing. It does look like tunes, but it's definitely times. Chicago Sun Times, seven ninety nine a month. San Francisco Chronicle, eight ninety nine a month. Capital Weekly. That looks. I think that it looks to me like maybe it's Russian, three ninety nine a month. Investors Business Daily, eight pound ninety nine a month. Hand <laughs> Handle Splat, at sixteen pound ninety eight a month. The Financial Express, three pound ninety nine a month. The Philippine Daily Inquirer, seven ninety nine a month. And you've got Mint, whatever that is, three ninety nine a month. There's so many. So many, but where are all the English papers?
And when I say that, I mean, like, the tabloids. The only one they had was the Mail, Daily Mail. And that's pretty much a tabloid mo paper. It's not as tabloidy as, like, the Sun or the Star or, you know, the Mirror. But why are, the mi why are those papers not in there? Yeah. If I filter it, filter, go back, go back, right, okay, so if I go Chicago Tribune, no, current issue 75 pence. Newspaper Library Entertainment and Pop Culture News Politics Newspapers Again it's just taking me back to where I was. So the Sun, the Mirror, the Star, the Daily Express Um None of those are on here. How unusual unless it's under a different section um, not really news entertainment and pop culture no nope. the times playstation real people boost uncut oh, wow wow these magazines it's got one it says £37.99 a year for uncut UK or total film £27.99 and I kind of think I probably want the magazine in my hand rather than on the screen. Oh, ah. Hello Magazine is available with Kindle Unlimited, which is what I've got. So here's me moaning. But actually, if I filter, no, go back, go back. Filter Kindle Unlimited. Hello Magazine and TV and Satellite Week. read I can read that for nothing because uh yeah I'll get rid of that oh it's downloading now it's one percent downloaded <laughs> this is exciting so there are some magazines that I can download on Kindle Unlimited because I, I, I've got that like monthly um, thing for that which means I can read as many books that's on there but I never thought about looking at the magazines so I wonder if there's any papers that I can get on there as well but the good thing about that is I can read it to you god I was excited so let's have a look. This is, or perhaps, perhaps what I'll do is I'll read it tomorrow. The, this is Hello Magazine. And, I don't want to, I don't want to, it's trying to get me to, exclusive report, a historic new era. This is the opportunity to restate what monarchy is all about. So there's a picture of the Queen, Prince Charles, Prince William, and um, William's eldest son. I'm not sure what his name is. Uh, is it Archie or... Bobby or, uh, or is Archie is that Harry's son I get a little bit confused but 
Look how big he is now. He's practically up to Prince Charles's nipples. He's well, probably higher actually. It depends because not quite up to his shoulders, but probably near his collarbone. So he's a tall lad, but then they are quite tall, aren't they? I think the Prince William and Prince Charles are quite tall. So the little boy, Prince William's son, he can only be about, can't be more than about seven. He's nearly as tall as his grandmother. But, in all fairness, he might be standing on a box. Because there's something hiding in the bottom of his feet. So he might be standing on a box to make him taller. Ah, thinking about it, yeah, it does look like that. Because otherwise, he's got daddy long legs. Seriously, I think his legs would be way too long. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. Unless there's actually going to be a proper picture so I can see. I want to see a proper picture. I want to go to that. Lots of adverts. Loads of... Oh, man, some of these pictures are beautiful. <laughs> oh, dear. Absolutely... Like the interior designs and stuff. Oh. Never mind. Uh, I don't know who this is. It's a bunch of famous people. Now it's James Middleton and fiance Eliza Sizzle in St. Bart's ahead of wedding. I thought St. Bart's was a hospital. Apparently they're sizzling. Not sunbathing, but sizzling. Oh, there's a picture of Anthony Joshua. In a pose. Looking fighting fit as he took to the golden sands of Barbados. Boxer Anthony seems to be enjoying a knockout start to 2020. And no wonder... The 30-year-old reclaimed multiple world heavyweight titles in December after his points victory over Randy Ruiz Jr. I didn't know his dad. So I don't think we need the junior bit. Because I'm not going to get confused between him and Anthony or Andy Ruiz Sr. There's no way I'm going to get confused between the two of them. So just Andy Ruiz. It's kind of all I need. Just saying. And uh, if Victor over Andy Ruiz in Saudi Arabia. Or Saudi Arabia. And it's been estimated that the feat. Has earned him as much as 60 million. And then it says. Not, not a bad end of year bonus. It's not. Uh, whatever ones. It's just a bunch of famous people that are on a beach. Which is kind of the opposite to what. Well it's not the opposite. I mean I know a lot of people go on holiday and stuff. But it's the opposite to what's happening here. At the moment. There's a lot of really skinny people. All of them, it's quite funny, all of them except Leonardo DiCaprio is skinny. Like really, really skinny. Like apart from obviously Annie Joshua's not skinny, he's just muscles, you know. But there's a, pic there's a picture, and I like this, because Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, massive star, but he's got a belly on him. And I, I like that. That's brilliant. Because. How old is he? 45. He's supposed to have a belly. 
and his girlfriend is 22. Some people seem to have a go at him for being with young, you know, younger women and stuff. And uh, I've got nothing else to say on that one other than good luck. I'm sure she's getting just as much out of the relationship as he is, possibly more. She looks happy. They both look happy. Good luck to them. That's what I think. Like, good luck. Have, they're having fun. What's wrong with that? Now there's a picture of someone. What's her name? Catherine Tiddlesley. And she's doing a pose where she's... Uh, I've got no idea what that's about. Who is she? Where is she from then? Every year, Catherine Tiddlesey makes the same New Year's resolution to be happier and healthier than the one before. This time, however, the bar is set significantly higher this than usual. I don't know what she's she's in. I don't know what she's in. I can't bother to read it, but the pictures are very. Um, very picturesque <laughs> they're, they're not natural pictures if you know what I mean they're very very professional oh there's a picture of Paul McCartney that reminds me did anyone see the new words or gummage TV show it was on uh, Christmas I just wonder what you thought of it. Du, 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 du. <laughs> There's a picture of Leona Lewis and new husband Bet on a winning start to 2020. She's my, probably my second favourite. X Factor winner she was my favourite X Factor winner until James Arthur and then he became my number one X Factor winner so Ollie Murs after a period of a single life, Oli Mers can now say his heart skips a beat once more thanks to new girlfriend Amelia Tank. A singer in a... Uh, uh, so not, not mention how old she is. Not mention how old he is either, which is normally what they do, is like for some reason 34 year old uh, Ollie Mers with 22 year old Amelia a competitive bodybuilder who combines lifting weights with a career in finance um, I don't know how old she is but that's what she does apparently and good luck to her I mean you know it's it's good to keep up date with that but she's also really really skinny and then Natalie Vodia Nova very 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 skinny and then I've got someone that isn't skinny Sarah Jane Me, but she's pregnant I don't know who she is I do know who she is because she does um She's a TV presenter on Sky. I saw her the other day. I'm sure I've seen her somewhere else before. She's Sky News host. She's 16 weeks pregnant. She did something else in the past. I need to Google that to find out. Because she looks familiar to me. Her face looks familiar. 
So I'm sure I've seen her before. I saw her for the first time this week on Sky. Ah. There's another picture. Always oh, an advert there. What is this? We are the NHS. We are supported. New annual payments for all undergraduate and postgraduate nursing students from August 2020. Funding of between 5000 and 8000 that you don't have to pay back. Yeah. But you'd need more. That's the thing. Well, I suppose you'd still got all the other stuff plus that on top. Because if you're working as a nurse, you're training as a nurse. I personally, here's what I think. I think nurses should be able to be trained, not have to pay anything towards the training and get full-time wages while they're training. That's what I think. Uh, oh, it's got pictures of some of the New Year's Eve, or New Year, New Year's Eve um, firework displays. So is that picture of Charlie Theron wearing Dior poses with her International Star Actress Award for her role in Bombshell in which she stars alongside Nicole Kidman and Margaret Roby. And then there's uh, Jennifer I like that. It don't even say what her name is. They just assume everyone knows who she is. Jennifer graces the red carpet in Richard Quinn floral gown, which she accessorized with a pink Tyler Ellis clutch and pink Cassaday heels. She later picked up the Spotlight Actress Award. Actress, actress above left. Um, it's Jennifer Lopez but because she's so famous we don't need to say her name because we all know who she is but what about people who don't know who she is I, I know who she is but I want to see if that picture of them with William was him standing on a box He's not. Ah, uh, no, he's not at all. There's a full-length picture, but it is deceiving because the bit that they were missing out didn't show the bottoms of the feet of any of them. Actually, I don't. Or maybe just Prince William. So Prince William's son is on the left. The Queen's standing on the floor. By the way, the rest of the sentence isn't... The rest of them are floating. They're all standing on the floor. But the Queen's at the bottom. And there's some steps. Now, Prince William is standing on the floor next to, um, to, next to his grandmother, the Queen. And Prince Charles is standing on the first step with his grandson. Old... What's an, uh, whatever his name is. Prince William's son. Prince William is nearly as tall as his dad standing on the st on the the floor below the step yeah it's a nice picture so he's 
Sir William's son, maybe he's older than eight. I don't know. Yeah. What else is on there? Lots of pictures of the royals on here. Who else is this? Melanie Sykes. Yeah. Fabulous at 50. Superstars of the catwalk, screen, and music world are among, among the women celebrating landmark golden birthdays this year. Still hitting career peaks and looking fit and glamorous. It's hard to believe these women aren't two decades younger. But along with their beauty, they excude, excude? A self, <laughs> excude, exude, excude? A self-confidence born of maturity. This is Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, um, to be fair, Naomi Campbell, she don't look too much different from she did years ago. Uh, as far as Claudia Schiffer goes, yeah, gosh, she don't even look that much different either, facially. Oh dear, and the next one, what is it? Maria, Maria Kari is. Singing superstar Maria Car Maria admits that she tends to go round down her age. So there is some debate as to how old she is. I don't I don't count years, but I definitely rebuke them. She has said, "I have anniversaries, not birthdays, because I celebrate life, darling." However, her mother Patricia once told Oprah Winfrey that her daughter was born in 1970 meaning the star will be 50 this year <laughs> oh good old mother um, Maria isn't short of accomplishments in her life so far this month she became the first artist to top the US charts in four separate decades and she welcomed twins Moroccan and Monroe with her then husband Nick Cannon in 2011 it's unconditional love and I never thought I was going to have kids yeah. I don't know I'm thinking about it she was born in 1970 she had, she became famous in, <sighs> about 91, 90, 90, A Vision of Love, I think was her first big hit, and which means she, I mean she was born in 1970, She's the same year as me, which means she'd be about 21 then, which would make sense. Um, based on that, the the least, the most she could take off her age would be three years, really. Which would make her maybe 17 when she had her first hit instead of 20. And 
because if she'd have been 16 it would have been a big deal because they you know remember Tiffany and uh, who's the other one that were both teenagers and there was such a big a big hoo-ha about them being young and also Britney Spears she was about 12 wasn't she when she did her first like huge hit and I think the uh, record producers that backed her and you know signed her up and everything they've uh Awesome. I mean, almost feeling guilty, I imagine. So they've kept it going. A king of Soho, Paul Raymond's granddaughter, Fawn James, shared her vision for the once notorious district after overhaul for famed theatre. So just thinking what? Oh. he was very rich that man apparently he owned loads of stuff lots of adverts the perfect and what's that about a personal trainer author and broadcaster Alice Leaving or Livering is one of the UK's biggest voices in health and fitness I've never heard of her. And I'm... Well, it's no one fitter than me. Uh, where is she? The 26-year-old Instagram star from Gerard's Cross, Buckinghamshire, shot to fame after shaving or sharing motivational workouts and healthy meal plans on a social media platform. She now has more than... 635,000 followers has trained celebrities as well oh cool good for you and uh, yep yeah. hmm <laughs> right that's next adverts adverts more adverts more adverts more adverts there's a lot of adverts on here. Yeah. Even the adverts have adverts. Oh, I seem to have run out of... I seem to have read the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, read the whole thing. It's gone. It's done. Well, that was... Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to pay... £9 or... £4.99 to buy that. I was lucky. Yeah, there's a lot of adverts on those magazines... And even the articles seem to be just adverts. Or the... Even, like, award ceremonies. They're showing the, the celebrities and then underneath saying what clothes they're wearing. I can see what... I can see they're wearing clothes. But no, no, no. We need to know the actual labels and how much they are cost. And where to buy them. Yeah. I mean, perhaps it's always been like that. Yeah, I don't know. Might have been. Do you think? Yeah. So that's that's it, really. That's uh, that's it for today. See it for today, and uh, I will be back again tomorrow with another instalment of Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And I will try and find something online 
that book of uh, private detectives that I read when I was a kid because I just want to see it I want to see if it's I want to see if it's still available because those books were brilliant they were, you know they'd give you tips and techniques and special uh, gadgets and things like that that you could buy or make yourself you know things like inv invisible glasses which uh, again they came through the came through the post but there's nothing in the box so two days in a row I've done that joke kind of so I'm going to go thank you for listening thank you very much for being part of this experiment if you like what I do leave a review remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy and spread that happiness by being kind to others if you want to lots of love